Alexander Dugan, what do we understand by the West? The term the West can be construed in different ways. Thus, we should first of all sharpen what we understand by that term and how the concept has evolved historically. It is perfectly evident that the West is not a purely geographical term. The sphericity of the Earth makes such a definition simply incorrect, that which is for one point the West is for another the East. But nobody includes this sense in the concept of the West. Although on closer examination, we shall discover here one important circumstance. The conception of the West takes by default as its zero line, from which are set its coordinates, precisely Europe. And it is by accident that the zero line meridian passes through Greenwich, in accord with an international convention. Eurocentrism is already built into this very procedure. Although many ancient states, Babylon, China, Israel, Russia, Japan, Iran, Egypt, etc., thought of themselves as the center of the world, middle empires, celestial, kingdoms under the sun, in international practice, Europe became the central coordinate. More narrowly, Western Europe did. Precisely from there it is customary to set a vector in the direction of the east and a vector in the direction of the west. It happens, then, that even in the narrow geographical sense we see the world from a Eurocentric point of view, and that which it is accepted to call the West at the same time presents itself as the center, the middle. In a historical sense, Europe became that territorial space where the transition from traditional society to the society of modernity occurred. What's more, such a transition was accomplished, thanks to the development of tendencies autochtonic to European culture and European civilization. Developing in a specific direction principles laid up in Greek philosophy and Roman law, through the interpretation of Christian teaching, at first in the Catholic scholastic, and later in the Protestant key, Europe came to create a model of society unique among other civilizations and cultures. This society in the first place was built on secular, atheistic, bases, proclaimed the idea of social and technical progress, created the foundations of the contemporary scientific view of the world, developed and introduced a model of political democracy, regarded as of paramount importance capitalistic, market, relations, transition from an agrarian to an industrial economy. In one word, namely Europe became the space of the contemporary world. And as much as in the borders of Europe itself the more avant-garde zones of development of the paradigm of modernity were such countries as England, Holland, and France, finding themselves to the west of Central, and especially Eastern, Europe, the concepts Europe and the West gradually became synonyms. The properly speaking European, as different from other cultures, consisted precisely in the transition from traditional society to the society of modernity, while this, in turn, occurred first of all in the European West. Thus, the term the West from the 17th to the 18th centuries acquires a precise civilizational sense, becoming a synonym of modernity, modernization, progress, social, industrial, economic and technological development. From now on, all that was involved in the processes of modernization was automatically attached to the West. Modernization and Westernization proved to be synonymous. The idea of progress as the basis for political colonization and cultural racism. The identity of modernization and westernization requires some clarifications, which will lead us to very important practical conclusions. The thing is that the formation in Europe of the unprecedented civilization of the modern era, the new time, the establishment of modernity, led to a particular cultural arrangement, which at first formed the self-consciousness of the Europeans themselves, but later also of all those who found themselves under their influence. With this establishment is advanced the sincere conviction that the path of development of Western culture, and especially the transition from traditional society to contemporary society, is not only a peculiarity of Europe and the Nereids that populate, but a universal law of development, obligatory for all other countries and Nereids. Europeans, people of the West, were the first to pass through this decisive phase, but all others are fatally doomed to go along the same path, and as much as such as the the idea arises that the West is the obligatory model of the historical development of all mankind, and world history, as in the past, so in the present and future, is conceived of as a repetition of those stages that the West, in its development, already passed through or is presently approaching, in advance of all others. Everywhere where Europeans bumped into non-Western cultures, which preserved traditional society in its way, they made an unequivocal diagnosis, barbarism, savagery, backwardness, absence of civilization, subnormality. Thus, gradually the West became the idea of a normative criteria for the evaluation of the Nereids and cultures of the entire world. The further they were from the West, in its newest historical phase, the more defective and inferior they were thought to be. The Archaic Roots of Western Exclusiveness It is interesting to analyze the origin of this universalist arrangement, 
in which the stages of development of the West and the generally obligatory logic of world history are identified. The deepest and most archaic roots can be found in the cultures of ancient tribes. It is characteristic of ancient societies to identify the concept of man with the concept of belonging to the tribe, to the ethnos, which leads at times to their denying the member of another tribe the status of man, or placing him wittingly on an inferior hierarchical level. Tribesmen from other tribes or enslaved Nereids became by this logic the class of serfs, carried beyond the boundaries human society, deprived of all kinds of rights and privileges. This model, fellow tribesmen equals people, foreign tribesmen equals not people, lies at the foundation of the social, legal and political institutions of the past, which was analyzed in detail by Hegel, in particular, by the Hegelian Ekoj, examining the pair of figures, master-slave. The master was everything, the slave, nothing. The status of man belonged to the master as a privilege. The slave was equated, even legally, to domesticated livestock or to an object of production. This model of domination proved much steadier than one could have thought, and it moved on in modified form into the modern era, the new time. Thus arose the complex of ideas, which paradoxically combined democracy and freedom within European societies themselves with rigid racist arrangements and cynical colonization in their relations with other, less developed, narrates. It is significant that the institution of slavery, and that on racial grounds, after more than a thousand year gap, returns in Western societies, in the first place in the USA, but also in the countries of Latin America, precisely in the modern era, in the epoch of the spreading of democratic and liberal ideas. Moreover, the theory of progress serves, actually, as a basis for the inhuman exploitation by Europeans and white Americans of Aboriginals, native Indians and African slaves. An impression begins to form, that by the formation of the civilization of the modern era in Europe, the model of the master-slave is transferred from Europe itself to the rest of the world in the form of colonial politics. Empire and its influence on the contemporary westernization. Another important source of this influence was the idea of empire, which Europeans explicitly rejected at the dawn of the modern era, but which penetrated into the unconscious of Western man. Empire, as the Roman, so later, also the Christian, the Byzantine in the East and the Holy Roman Empire of German nations in the West, was thought of as the universe, inside of which live people, citizens, while beyond its limits live subhumans, barbarians, heretics, gentiles or even fantastic objects, man-eaters, monsters, vampires, Gog and Magog, and so on. Here the tribal division between one's own, people, and strangers, non-people, is carried over to a higher and more abstract plane. Citizens of empire, participants in the universe, and non-citizens, inhabitants of the global periphery. This stage of generalization concerning who is and who is not to be counted a person, can be looked at entirely as a transitional stage between the archaic and the contemporary West. Having formally rejected empire, together with its religious foundations, contemporary Europe wholly preserved imperialism, only transferring it to the level of values and interests. Progress and technological development were henceforth thought of as a European mission, in the name of which a planetary colonization strategy was unfurled. Thus, the modern era, having broken away formally from traditional society, transferred some basic arrangements of precisely the traditional society, the archaic division into the pair person slash non-person on ethnic grounds, the model of the slave master, the imperialist identification of its civilization with the universe and of all others with savages, and so on, to the new conditions of life. The West as an idea and as a planetary strategy became an ambitious project of the new establishment of a world government, this time raised to the status of the enlightenment, development and progress of all humanity. This is a kind of humanitarian imperialism. It is important that the thesis about progress was not a simple cover for the egoistic predatory interests of Western people in their colonial expansion. Faith in the universalism of Western values and in the logic of historical development was entirely sincere. Interests and values coincided in this instance. This gave tremendous energy to the trailblazers, sailors, travelers and businessmen of the West to settle the planet. They sought not only profits, but also carried enlightenment to the savages. Cruel robbery, cynical exploitation and a new wave of slave holding, together with the modernization and technological development of colonial territories, all together formed the basis of the West as an idea and as global practice. Modernization, endogenous and exogenous. Here we should make one important observation. Starting from the 16th century, the process of planetary modernization begins to unfold from the territory of Western Europe. It strictly coincides with the colonization by the West of new lands, where, as a rule, Nereids preserving the foundations of traditional society are living. But gradually modernization affects everyone, both Westerners and non-Westerners. In one way or another, everyone is modernized. 
but the essence of this process remains different in different cases. In the West itself, in the first place in England, France, Holland and especially the USA, a country built as a laboratory experiment of the modern era, lit, the new time, on supposedly empty land, from a blank page, modernization is distinguished by an endogenous character. It grows from the consistent development of cultural, social, religious and political processes, contained in the very foundations of European society. This does not come about everywhere simultaneously and with one and the same intensity, here there evidently lag behind such people as the Germans, Spaniards, and Italians, with whom modernization proceeds in a somewhat slower rhythm than it does with their European neighbors from the West. Still, the modern era for European people ensues from their internal timetable and in correspondence with the natural logic of their development. The modernization of the countries and people of Europe emerges according to internal laws. Being unfolded from objective preconditions and corresponding to the will and mood of the majority of European people, it is endogenous, that is, having an internal principle. It is a completely different matter with those countries and people that are pulled into the process of modernization despite their will, becoming victims of colonization or else being reluctant to oppose European expansion. Of course, conquering countries and people are sending black slaves to the USA, the people of the West further the process of modernization. Together with the colonial administration, they bring out new orders and foundations, and also the technique and logic of economic processes, mores, social political structures, and legal institutions. Black slaves, especially after the victory of the abolitionist North, became members of a more developed society, although they also remained second-grade people, than the archaic tribes of Africa, from which they had been taken by slave traders. The fact of the modernization of colonies and of enslaved nations cannot be denied. The West even in this case proves to be the motor of modernization. But this last point is very specific. It can be called exogenous, that is, occurring from without, stuck on, brought in. Non-Western people and cultures remain in the conditions of traditional society, developing in concord with their own cycles and their own inner logic. There, there are also periods of ascent and decline, religious reforms and internal discord, economic catastrophes and technical discoveries. But these rhythms correspond to a different, non-Western model of development, follow a different logic, are directed to different goals and decide different problems. Exogenous modernization and its foundational quality consists in this, does not emerge from the internal needs and natural development of traditional society, which, when left to itself, probably would never have come to those structures and models, which were put together in the West. In other words, such modernization is coerced and stuck on from without. Consequently, the synonymous series modernization equals westernization can be continued, it is also colonization, the introduction of external authority. The oppressed majority of mankind, excluding the Europeans and the direct descendants of the colonizers of America, were subjected to precisely this violent, coerced, external modernization. It had an impact on the traumatic and internal inconsistencies of the majority of contemporary societies of Asia, the East and the Third World. This is sick modernity, the caricatural West. Alexander Dugin, The West and Its Challenge, 1989-1990.